I wanted to lay out. This is really starting to come out now. And you'll recall a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I wrote an op-ed for Hartman Report calling for Donald Trump and, and his cronies, the people around him in the White House, who downplayed the, the, the pandemic, and particularly who, who went out of their way to downplay the pandemic after April 7th, when it was reported April 7th of 2020, you know, a year ago, April 7th, when it was reported in all the major media, it was the lead story on all three television networks, it was a lead story on all the cable networks, on that day, on that one day, that African Americans were dying at a much disproportionately, massively disproportionately higher rate than were white people from COVID. Uh, keep in mind, back at that point in time, only about 11,000 Americans had died, but nonetheless, April 7th was the turning point, and it was literally the next day that Rush Limbaugh and Tucker Carlson, actually it was literally that day that Rush Limbaugh and Tucker Carlson and others on the right came out and said, whoa, I get, as Britt Hume said, you know, on the Tucker Carlson show, I guess this isn't as deadly as we thought. Right, because it's only killing black people. Well, and old white people, but you know, there's nothing you can do about that was the theory, right? So now we're finding, I mean, this is in the Washington Post. This was uh, last Friday. Uh, the, the headline, and forgive my mispronunciation her, of her name, uh, Mess, Messonnier, M-E-S-S-O-N-I-E-R, I'm not sure, you know, in the French it would be Messonnier, I'm assuming, but anyhow, Messonnier, uh, Burks and Deborah Burks detail political interference in last year's coronavirus response. And it's, you know, Dan Diamond wrote this, it's very straightforward, he writes, the Trump administration repeatedly interfered with efforts by the CDC last year to issue warnings and guidance about the evolving coronavirus pandemic. Six current and former health officials told congressional investigators in recent interviews. So now they're coming forward to Congress. Last year, you know, they've been coming forward and just laying it out. Yep, you know, Trump uh, did not let us warn the American people and therefore hundreds of thousands of people died who didn't need to die. One of those officials, right, Stan Diamond in the Washington Post, former CDC health expert Nancy Nier, uh, warned in a February 25th, 2020 news briefing that the virus has spread. Now, keep in mind, this was February before April 7th of last year, that the virus has spread in the U.S. was inevitable. And that led to the agency's media appearances being curtailed. And then former White House coronavirus coordinator Deborah Birx confirms that and goes on to basically say it's even worse than that. Officials, again from the Washington Post, other officials detailed why the CDC held no briefings between March 9th and May 29th, 2020, effectively muzzling the scientific agency, this is the CDC, as the coronavirus spread rapidly across the United States. Uh, he writes, the White House, uh, the, this is from Kate Galata, she was a former a senior CDC communications official. She told the panel, I quote, the White House repeatedly blocked the agency's media requests, including a planned April 2020 briefing. Well, of course, <laughs> after April 7th, you don't say a word, right? It goes on to note, Trump appointees pressured the agency to change its regular research papers to better align with the White House's more optimistic messaging. Deborah Burks said, alleged that White House advisor Scott Atlas worked to curtail access to coronavirus test last year, coronavirus test last year. She says that uh, At Atlas called for excluding people who didn't have visible symptoms, even if they'd been exposed to the virus. Don't bother testing them. We only need to test people who are actually symptomatic. Right. And thus, we have the highest death rate in the world. Even though we are only 4% of the world's population, we have 750,000 plus dead Americans at the hands of, of, of Donald Trump and the Trump administration. And is there ever going to be any accountability for this? Why hasn't Congress created a select committee to look into this? Why hasn't the uh, Justice Department, why has Merrick Garland not appointed a special prosecutor to look into crimes leading to the death of unnecessary deaths of hundreds of thousands of dead Americans? We spent years looking at four dead Americans in Benghazi.